Tom, I love you. Thank you. As much as a man can love another man. You'd be surprised. Tom, uh, your, your advice, women, groundbreaking. Groundbreaking. <laughs> I gotta say I love you. My thank husband you. turned me on to you, and I totally thank you for saving our marriage. Your voice was in my head the moment you said no condom, and uh, I owe you big time for that. I want to meet somebody, see if she uh, can get into me, and just uh, take her home. And then you can get into her. Exactly. <laughs> I appreciate what you're doing with, I think, waking people up and getting them to take a look at how bad and pathetic that we've become. I know your whole game, though. What game is that? Subliminal. Uh, oh, it's subliminal. subliminal I see. Subliminal mind tricks. Of, subliminal of mind tricks. Of the sheep, because most of the people that... I don't have to do anything subliminal with you. I can tell you right to your face. We're not talking about an artist here. We're talking about a working actor, which you is a job. You haven't seen his work in Batman yet. I'll oh, you, his work in Batman. That, that, that's that pro- proves he's ours. Batman. Are you are you stuttering? I was just talking to my wife a short time ago about that. She's all all down and sad about it. I said, you know what I said? Anyone who takes their own life, no, I don't have any sympathy for them because I was held up a long time ago, back in 87, and I developed PTSD, and I have an anxiety problem myself, but I have... Tony on the top like his show. Hello. Hey, Tommy. Hey, Tony. How you doing, big guy? How you doing? I'm doing all right. Sorry to talk like that. I get like that as a New Yorker when I get annoyed. Not 15 seconds. It took 15 seconds for him to get it in. Hey, I was just on my way home right now. I was just listening to the radio. I found you. I heard you on the line. Uh, seems like you don't believe in marriage. You heard me on the line? Did, did you hear on the radio or on the phone? On uh, both. I love how morons like you call in and act like you're revealing some deep, dark I'm secret. A moron. Like you're bonus. Oh, we clearly you are. Oh, okay. Got a $25 gift card to the movies. Does that mean a $15 meal? It, well, it does. Or, or it skip the meal altogether. Why are you having a meal? I don't know. I'm, I'm a big guy. I like to eat. So She's eat. not so eat. big, but she loves to eat, too. Yeah, but what do you eat before you see her? Ah, very true. Touche. Have you ever looked around the other women at Vons? Yeah. What do they it's look like? Sad. Yeah. And would you say the vast majority of them are married? See, I don't even know. What do you think? <laughs> Vons at 10 o'clock in the morning. Somebody is at work paying for those fruits and vegetables. True. And then comes big fat cow in the stretch, uh, the full stretch pants. But I'm thinking but she the drooling before with... she got married. No, because what man would marry a cow? Man, I just started listening to you yesterday, man. I don't know what they've been teaching me out here, man, but you speak the truth, man. What is the most important thing that you've learned here so far? That I ain't got to take no girl out to dinner to get some. Let some other guy who's trying to hit it with that uh, get get exactly. her the chicken sandwich. Let some other dude take her and spend a couple hundred dollars on her dinner and all that. I'm straight, man. Either McDonald's or a Hot Pocket. <laughs> A Hot Pocket and a Pop-Tart for dessert. Exactly. You can put one in each toaster slot. And if you're good, you might get a Capri Sun. <laughs> How about a Sunny D? Come on. Oh, yeah. you, you're giving them too much right now. <laughs> <laughs> From a secret location in Hollywood, it's the, 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 the Tom Likas Show. I think that you just don't really make our world a better place. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues. You really care about it's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No, I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Wide open telephones on the Tom Like His Show. Talk about anything that's on your mind, anything at all. It could be anything we discussed on the air this week. Anything you think we should have talked about, you can call up, yell, scream, complain, jump up and down. It's all fair game as long as you're absolutely fascinating. 
If you're not, we kick your ass the hell off the telephone. All you do is dial us up here at 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Selena on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. How are you? Great. Um, okay, my boyfriend actually called you a little bit earlier. His name was Matt, and he's the one who called in about moving in together. And yeah. you told him to go to Ikea tomorrow at 10 a.m. and right. had a few callers that called in. Yes. Um, I'm kind of embarrassed, Tom. You're embarrassed? Why? Because I listen to your show all the time. I've actually met you a year ago when you were at On Broadway in San Diego. I was there on stage with you with my mom. And I listen to your show, and I kind of always think those guys who call in and say things like that are kind of pussies. And now he's that guy on the Tom Likas show. He called in and kind of acted like a pussy, and I'm kind of rethinking if I should do this. Oh. So maybe you don't even want to move in with him. Uh, I don't know. I, I'm not the kind that wants to get married or have kids, but I just, it sounded like a good idea. Uh, well, I know it sounded like a good idea. Like, I always love to tell the story about when I was 12 years old. You know what sounded like a good idea? I wanted to drive a fire truck. Sounded yeah, like a great sounded idea. Sounded like a good idea. <laughs> sounded like a fantastic idea. How hard is it to drive? You sit in the, <laughs> sit in the big chair and you steer the wheel and... You know, if you need to turn, you turn left, right. How hard can that be? <laughs> Sounds like a great idea to me. Now, would it have been a good idea to uh, the people who might come into my path? Or would it have been a good idea for me if I turned a little too far and tipped the truck over? Probably not. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, he's kind of the one who's really always kind of been pushing for us to move in together. Oh, he may very well be. Well, well, why would that? I mean, I know I listen to your show all the time, and it's usually the girlfriends who are pushing the guys to move in together. So why would is he kind of pushing for Well, us? I think that when guys are pushing for that, they really do believe. That if you're there all the time, it's going to be like Domino's Pizza. They're going to get sex anytime they want it. <laughs> And I'll just come home and do his laundry and cook all of his meals. Well, he may believe that, too. Um, and the fact is, and I, now you can confirm it, chances are you go to his house on days and nights when you wouldn't mind having sex with him. And the, yeah. day, and the days you don't feel up to it are probably days that you just call him and tell him, you know what, I'll see you tomorrow. That's true. Right. So he thinks that all the days you're not seeing him now, that you will be putting out day after day after day, when in reality, he doesn't see you on those days when you've got cramps. He doesn't see you on those days when you don't feel like having sex. He doesn't see you on the days when you're tired because you work late or uh, you, you don't feel well. He doesn't see you on those days. He only sees you when you're at your absolute best. I know. that's Well, that's true. And so he's under the delusion that you're the same every day and and that when you move in it's going to be as good as it is those few days he sees you now well and and that works both ways right like on the days that i see him he's in a good mood and fun to be oh, around no and... doubt but we weren't talking to you we were talking to him yeah and actually i mean i need your opinion too because i wasn't listening at that point i got a phone call that he had called in i mean did he sound like a total pussy to you i value your opinion tom well, uh, I'll put it this way. <laughs> okay. Because uh, I'm, I, you know, I'm not here to defend him at all. Yeah, I know. Uh, it, it's not that he sounds like a pussy. It just sounds like he hadn't thought this through. Yeah, I don't think neither. I mean, we've been and here. And, yeah. and I believe he was calling in, like so many callers, he wanted to get that rubber stamp. Like, I know you tell everybody else not to do this, but this makes sense in my case, doesn't it, Tom? Yeah. And, of true. course, it doesn't make any more sense for him than it does for the other nudniks who call in here. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I was I was pretty surprised because I actually listen, I mean, ten times more than he does. Yeah. So I was pretty surprised that he had called in. Yes. So. And, and, and the reality is when two people move in, uh, furniture is going to move. Yeah. It's going to. 
Um, I mean, and like you say, it's good now, so... Yeah, I, I, you know how many times I've said this to women? I have said, you know, why, why, why ruin a good thing? Yeah, if it's not broke, don't fix it. We're having a good time. Yeah. Let's just keep having a good time. Yeah. Plus, I live with my mom, who's pretty fun, so... I, don't I know. It. Any guy could be more fun than that. That's so. right. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you for your opinion, Tom. So, what are you going to do now? What are you going to do now? He's going. I he's going to IKEA in the morning. By the way. No, no IKEA. Um, I think that we need to think this through. So, I don't think that we're going to be moving in together. Just keep it the way it is. Yeah. Uh, if it's not broke, don't fix it. See it when it feels good. Stay home with a with a with a good uh, gossip magazine or whatever it is you like to read when you're not feeling so well. Yeah. You know, watching TV, watching E or whatever you watch when you're home, okay? And, and and that's it. Be done with it. Going out for drinks with my mom. Right. <laughs> exactly. Okay. Well, thank you, Tom. Could you take me out with a bong rip? Of course I can. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. This is Alan on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey Tom. Hey. I got. I need your advice, man. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. I, I met my girlfriend about two years ago, next month, and um, she got kicked out of her house, her parents' house, about maybe six months ago. So you know, instead of letting her sit on the streets, you know, I I said, come live with me. Why'd and you do, wait, why'd you do that? Well, because, you know, she had nowhere else to go. Well, k k she should get a job. Get a well, friend. She does have a job. You know, that's what I told her. I told her as long as you keep a job and... But if she has a job, she can get a roommate. Well, she doesn't have, like, you know, a really good job to go out and get, like, a, a apartment by herself. Why not? I said to get a roommate. Well, yeah, she could do that. Why, but... why didn't you let her do that? Because, you know, the first thing... I thought it was just take care of her, you know, to help her out. Why Why should you be doing that? To be a, I mean, to be a good boyfriend. Be a good First friend. of all, at, at 22, you're too young to be a boyfriend. All right. Right? Are you a regular listener to this show? Uh, no, usually, um, usually at work. No right? relationships until age 25. Until 25? Correct. All right. And definitely no moving in with your girlfriend. All right. Maybe ever. Well, here's my situation, Tom. I went to, like, a uh, timeshare presentation last <sighs> night. Okay. And... Sorry? Okay. And, uh, I mean, they had, a, they had, like, really good offers and this and that. And it wasn't you... so much a timeshare, like, one selected spot or this and that. You know, they had different cities all across the world and i came home and i bought one i bought like the little the littlest package that they had and it was only like seventeen hundred dollars and i came home what did you get for seventeen hundred dollars it's um they do it by credit they don't you don't have to take a week you know you could go one day out of the week you could go two days out of the week you could do how many days what do you, you get for seventeen hundred i'm not asking about the other packages you, oh, oh, what do uh, you get for seventeen hundred dollars? The resort. I get the chance to go away for a week. Well, you know, for, so for seven days. For seven days. So that means that <laughs> for how long? For seven days in the middle of summer. For I how many years? Sorry. For how many years? Uh, the program that I picked was only eighteen months. For eighteen months. Or so what I does that mean? Seven days out of 18 months? Yeah. So do you understand that what you just got, let's review, you paid $1,700? Yeah. So that's $245 a night. You can't find a hotel room for $245 a night in Mexico? In the middle of summer, like during spring break? You're telling me you can find a room like that? Yes. 
for a whole week for like six people. Two hundred and forty-five dollars a night. This is Mexico. There's there's eleven pesos to the dollar. You can't find a room for two hundred and forty-five dollars a night. I couldn't. Give me ten minutes with uh, Priceline dot com. Hello. <laughs> That's what are you kidding me? And then and then let me guess they they're happy to finance that for you. Uh, no, I just paid it all in cash. Paid it all in cash. That way I didn't have any extra bills. And you had to sit at a timeshare presentation. Yeah, I had to sit through time. Yeah. All right. Um, I don't recommend those. You don't? No, I don't. But anyway, um, that being said, so what happened with your girl who has moved in with you? Which was okay. not a good idea. What happened to her? So I got home, and I was really excited because, I don't know, it's a chance to get away and everything, and I started explaining it to her, and she basically was all against it, and she started yelling. What was she against? Arguing. Wait, what was she against? She was against the main fact that, you know, I have other bills that I could pay, that I could help catch up on my credit. Well, this is none of her business. That's what I said. Well, you see, that's what happens when you let them move in. That I told her, I said, look, well, did you put down the money for it? I asked, you know, I mean, I put down my but own But if she wasn't living cash. there, you wouldn't even be having this conversation. Yeah, if I would have listened to you, Tom. Right, but you thought you knew more than I did, didn't you? Well, I haven't, haven't been listening to you that long. <laughs> like I said, I work at night. Well, so, a, but did, before she moved in, did you hear me say don't let her move in? No, I didn't. Yeah. Well, this is what happens when you let them move in. Yeah. So this is your opportunity to get out. You tell her she doesn't like it, get out. Tell her. Yeah. Tell her. That's probably what I'm going to have to do. You because... know, you just do it. Don't even think about it. Just do it. Because, you know, I'm trying to look out for my future. And if she wants to be a part of that, then, hey, that's cool. If she doesn't, then I can get the next chick, just a cheaper version. So the point is, version. the point is, just, just get her out of there. Why do, you, why do you need her around? Fix the mistake. All right. By the way, can I tell you something else? I'll never tell her I said it. I think yeah. you should pay your bills, too, and not be spending $1,700 on a timeshare. <laughs> You're laughing. I should. I should. She's right. Okay. But I'll never tell her I said so. <laughs> You'll never tell her? No, I won't, but she's right. She is. I mean, I why? Could. If you have bills, why are you spending $1,700 on a timeshare? I don't know. I just thought it'd be, a, you know, that way I could get a chance to go away. Because you, if you have other bills, you can't afford to do that. I could save. Yeah, but you had, didn't save. You spent, and you still have other bills. Yeah. I'm probably going to see if I can get my money back out of it or either sell it. So sell it? You're going like, to sell seven hotel nights for $1,700? Who's going to buy that? I can sell them individually, though. Like, it doesn't have to be a whole week. It could be, like, it could, for example... But, but any, any, any maroon out there can find a room in Mexico for $245 a night. I guess I just didn't do my research before I went in there. Of course you didn't. If you can't find... I'll tell you what. I could sit down tonight on the Internet and find a room in Cabo for $245 a night. Not even think about it. All right. It's well, Mexico. Now, I couldn't find one in New York for 204 Actually, I could find one in New York. For, I, do, I have a room in New York for 245 Twenty-five dollars a night next week, but mm -hmm. it's the middle of the winter, and who wants to be there now anyway? Yeah, but but for two hundred and forty-five in Mexico, <laughs> come on! All right, so you think I should try to get my money back for it? And I don't think you're ever going to get your money back for it. You've talked to an attorney about that, and that might cost you more than the thing itself. Look, you already made the mistake. But, pal, if you've got bills, you should be paying your bills off. You should not be adding more bills. Well, yeah. I mean, it's not like I'm backed up in my bills, but it's just... If you, if you, do you pay any interest on your credit cards? Yeah. Too many bills. Yeah. If okay. you ever pay interest on anything but a car loan or a, or a mortgage, 
You got too many bills. You can't afford anything. I see what you're saying. Do you so, understand? So what do you think I should do from here? If I, you're saying I, it would be too much of a hassle to try to get my money back, what do you think I should Enjoy your vacation, and hopefully you learned a lesson, for God's sake. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. I was in the shower, and I got out of the shower, and my wife was checking my cell phone. And I swear to God, for like the last week, every day I get home, she's like, What What number was this? What number was that? Who is this? Who is that? She's like, Who is Kim? I feel like telling her, Hey, bitch, Kim's the girl I'm banging behind your back. It's the Tom Likas Show. Tom like his show, wide open telephones, 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Thank you for tuning in. George, on the Tom like his show. Hello. Hey, what's up, Tom? Not much, George. I have a problem, and uh, I really wouldn't trust anybody's advice but yours. Um... When I turned 18, well, I'm 19 right now, but when I turned 18, I uh, started getting those credit card uh, advertisements, you know, I'll get a card, you know, low APR, blah, blah, blah. Uh, long story short, I am in debt, like about 23, 24 grand or so, and uh, my credit isn't so hot, uh, and I kind of need advice on how I could, uh, you know, get my credit rating up. What would be the... Fastest way All right, here's the fastest. I've got the I've got the solution. The fastest way to get your credit rating up. Are you, do you have a pen? Uh, yeah, I have a good memory. All right. And I'm driving. When you go home, write this down. It, it's a very simple solution. It's only three words. Are you ready? Oh, man. Yeah, I'm ready. Okay. And this, by the way, is good for anybody else who's got $24,000 in credit card debt. How do you get your credit rating? How do you improve your credit rating? Three words. Pay your bills. Yeah, when you say that, do you mean pay the minimum? No. Pay a little more? Little I mean minimum? pay them completely. Okay, but obviously I'm not going to be able to pay 24 grand. In if you can't pay 24 grand, you know what? You shouldn't have borrowed it, you idiot. Yeah, I'm, I'm well aware of that, but I mean... Well, if you're aware of it, why'd you do it? Wait, 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 stop. Come on, you're 19 now. Wait, wait, you're smart now and you were stupid last year? Uh, Not exactly stupid. But Where I did know. you get the idea that you could borrow $24,000? Uh, I don't know. I just... Watch your mouth. You're on the air. Oh, sorry. Well, yeah, I, I just started swiping like crazy and... uh Why did you I, do that? I don't know, actually. I just, what do you mean you don't know? You I, spent twenty four thousand. You wait. You spent twenty four thousand dollars, and you don't know why. Uh, I know there's things I wanted. Yeah, but you're a deadbeat because you you want things you can't afford. I mean, I'm, I'm planning to get out of it. I, I know I could get out of it. No, uh, well, clearly you can't. Out. Well, what do you? How much money do you make? Um, actually, well, I'm, I'm not really working at the time. There we go. So tell me exactly how you're going to get out of $24,000 of debt. I don't know, fill my body. Right. You're not getting out of that. You're heading right for bankruptcy now. Uh, okay, but um, that still doesn't answer my question. Say I managed to get out of this debt. How are you going to do how it? Can I rebuild it? And I got another okay, three-word solution. Got it ready? Get a job. Okay, well, besides that, how What do you I mean besides that? What do you mean besides that? Why okay, can't you get... No you're a bodied adult. Why don't you have a job? Um, I'm spoiled. You're an idiot. You know what? Yeah. You deserve everything that's going to happen to you. You're a deadbeat. You are immoral. Uh, you deserve anything bad that happens to you. Spending $24,000 and you won't even get a goddamn job? I'm not going to help you. I want you to go down in flames. Mm, interesting. Yeah. 
Uh, you'll see how interesting it gets when the uh, when the legal letters start coming and you have to start uh, explaining why you can't pay the bills and well, why you're a deadbeat. Bills, I mean, no, you can't. I, I have to pay the monthly, the monthly fees and stuff like that. Yeah, well, the, you don't even you don't even know what what, what you're paying. Um, I I hustle. Huh? I hustle. What do you mean you hustle? I get money from other different places. Yeah, like where? You sell drugs? Uh, no. What do you do? I why well, I really probably shouldn't incriminate myself. Oh, so you're a criminal too? Uh, not really, but I'm I'm not sure. Well, you can't incriminate yourself if you're not a criminal. Yeah, look, you if you're a criminal if you're doing something illegal. Mm. Are you doing something okay, illegal? No, I'm not. Okay, All right, then tell I, us what you're okay, doing. Say I have zero debt. How can I build my credit? You don't have zero debt. Okay, you're missing the point. How can I build my credit? Yeah, when you have zero debt, call me back and I'll tell you. Okay, that wouldn't answer my question. I'm not answering your question. I am not going to help you because you're a thief. You're a deadbeat. You are a totally How immoral totally individual deep. because you borrowed $24,000 that you have no ability or intention of paying back. Oh, I have the intention of paying it. Yeah, I, when? I will pay it. When? Uh, well, as soon as I come up with twenty four. And how are you going to do that? By by stealing from people, selling drugs? Nah. How are you going to do I it? I could get a job. What? Why? Why won't you? Um, because well, right now I'm trying to focus on school. Right. And uh, what trade school are you going to, son? I'm not going to a trade school. I'm actually going to UCLA. UCLA is that so? Yeah. But also the loans and other stuff like that is part of the debt. What is? The loans. So part of the 24000 is student loans? Yeah. So how much of it is credit card debt? Uh, well, right now I have like approximately 10000 and the rest is loans and stuff like that. Right. And who is helping you pay for school? Well, it started off with my parents, but uh, for for a while I had a job. I took a, a break, and I got a job, a full time job, uh, working for this uh, medical supply place. But um, well, I, I decided to quit that for now, so I could focus on education. Mm. Is that a is that a wrong step to do, or? Because I mean, I, I, I think you I really need wanna... if you have you put yourself in this position, you need to do both. Oof, but that wouldn't like leave me enough time to that, work as much as I would. Come like on, to. I, I, how much partying are you doing? What'd you spend that ten thousand right. dollars on? Let's start with that. Uh, well, okay, okay. Well, the party started like, yeah, the, the party was pretty much what got me some of that. But then that's you know, right. For the well, that, let's like start that. with let's start with no more partying. No, I haven't partied in like I have no idea. I haven't partied in a while. Yeah, three whole days. No, I, uh, more like four. No, I'm kidding. No, I haven't partied in like months. But um, most of most of the debt has been like helping out to like my family and stuff. Helping your family? Yeah, because uh, you don't have any money. Like, yeah, we're, no. Well, when I was working, I managed to like save some, and uh, but you don't. But you should not be using. Your credit card to help anybody. Well, I mean, I, I can't just turn my back on my family. Uh, guess what? They can get credit cards, too. Well, I mean, they, they do, but, you know, I come from, like, private school. You know, I have siblings that are private school, and, like... That's not your you know, problem. They, they help me out, so that's what You I'm don't do. have anything because you don't work. I mean, but I still have saved up, like, some money, but, I mean... You know, I... You don't have anything. You have don't like, work. You know, Part-time job doesn't really pull much, but... Yeah, I, well, I'm not going to say it again, okay? I've really had enough. Tom, Tom, like it, like it. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Do you have kids? By design, I do not. You don't? By design. By design? Yes. That's By dictionary. 
stupid bitch. It's the Tom Likey Show. From Hollywood, it's the Tom Likey Show at 1-800-5800-TOM. Wide open telephones on the Tom Likey Show. Look at this story from Norfolk, Virginia. Another bitch. A Newport News woman. That's a city in Virginia, by the way. Newport News. It's not a newspaper. What is the newspaper, Newport News? The Newport News News? <laughs> the Newport News paper. <laughs> it's the stupidest name for a place I've ever seen. Newport News. The truth has to be told. Why doesn't anyone ever call them on that? Newport News. Why, why not just Newport, Virginia? Or cool Virginia. You know what I'm talking about. A Newport Newswoman says she filed a false report with police. You know why? To get her boyfriend's attention. And by the way, you have to see the picture of this chick. Oh my God, she's frightening. For hours, 38-year-old Christina Fry had the undivided attention of law enforcement officials investigating her claim that she was abducted and sodomized. A story she later confessed was not true. By the way, one look at the picture, you would know this is not true. <laughs> Seriously. I think rapists would go, uh, no, no thanks. Here's what she said. She said, I had a boyfriend that wasn't giving me attention. <laughs> and I was doing that, wanting him to pay attention to me. <laughs> I didn't realize when I did it, the statement, it was going to be a jailable offense. The lie cost a lot in wasted police hours and overtime. In addition to the $1,400 spent at taxpayers' expense, for Fry to be examined at the hospital. It's a big deal. I never should have done that, said Fry. Police said they could have used those hours to investigate two rapes that did happen in Newport News this week. One at Terrytown Apartments, the other in the southeast community, wherever that is. However, it says here, Fry was very convincing with her detailed description of the phone suspect and his car. What is a phone suspect? No idea. Detective Dinah Baltus, the Newport News Police Department, said she knew the whole time it was a false report, but in the meantime, we're taking that description, we're stopping black males and almost accusing them of committing a crime. See, she, not a <laughs> white woman to get the attention of the boyfriend and the police department says she was raped by a black guy. That's great. That does so much for racial harmony when these bitches do stuff like that. A lead detective with the Special Victims Unit, by the way, the television station, <laughs> the television station that uh, put special victims in there spelled victims, V-I-T-I-M apostrophe S. Well, Newport News is small. Maybe they only have one victim. A lead detective of the special victims unit says false reports victimize every true victim out there. Detective Baltus says when thing, when thing like this happened, Can they get the news right in Newport News? And when thing like this happened, it's like a social crime. It causes tension. We're just glad that we were able to determine that it was a false report, so we didn't have someone wrongfully accused and put in jail. Filing a false police report is a misdemeanor. <laughs> Why? Carries a maximum punishment of 12 months in jail and or a $2,500 fine. If you tear the tag off your mattress, it probably is a bigger punishment than that. 
Fry says this isn't her first run in the law with the law. She had previously served time for forgery. That's just great. By the way, if she serves one hour in jail, I will be shocked. It's probably the Nobel Peace Prize, Congressional Medal of Honor. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Jeff on the Tom like his show. Hello. Hey, what's up, Father? Uh, the ratings last I looked, Jeff. Oh, that's awesome. That's good to hear. You deserve it. Thank you. Um, so, after hearing those last two morons you had on the phone, I wanted to get your opinion on the uh, economic stimulus plan and think how helpful you actually think it's going to be. Well, um, the economic stimulus plan, for people who don't read the news... Uh, which still is in the process of being formulated. The, the, the idea is going to be to send a check to uh, over 100 million individuals for somewhere around six to $800. That's what it's going to end up being. And the idea is to stimulate the rather moribund economy, <laughs> which, which needs a little Metamucil right about now. And their theory is if you send checks... Of course, these are the same people who say that they're against welfare and everything. If you send checks to the poorest among us, that they'll go out and spend it and start stimulating the economy. Um, I think there are some people who are going to take that check and probably pay down their, their debt or make a mortgage payment they can't make, and then <laughs> then they'll need money again next month. Well, but the last time this was done, the, I think they sent a $300 check in 2001 after 9-11. Yep. And apparently it was part of what kept the economy going at a time when it was in danger of really just stopping dead cold. Uh, the thing is, these checks don't do much for the individual. They do more for the economy as a whole. The problem I have with it is... We don't have $200 million to be handing out in checks to people. So it just adds to inflation. Well, the dollar will be further devalued because you're going to have to print up dollars in order to distribute dollars we don't have. You know how the dollar is weak against uh, the euro, against the British pound, against a bunch of world currencies. Uh, what do you think another $200 million in money we don't have is going to do to the value of the dollar? going to limit my foreign travel is what it's going to do. <laughs> well, you're damn straight. I know. Now, I did see the British pound was down to $1.94, which it had been well over $2 for a while. But uh, that's because England is having its own economic problems right now. Yeah. But we're leading the way. <laughs> oh, yes. We're leading yeah. the world right down the toilet bowl. You bet we are. Well, thanks for that. Can you take me out uh, African style? African tribal style. Of course I can. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. This is Brian in Portland, Oregon on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Tom, how you doing? Doing great. You know, I I made a mistake. I thought I knew more than, than the professor. What did you do? Um, well, I'm a 26-year-old, just got out of college, making about close to 100 grand a year, and I got involved in a relationship with a 32-year-old divorced mother of a 4-year-old daughter. Oh, Jesus. And I Portland is full of those. Years. Huh? Portland is full of those. I, I will say it, though. She is probably in L.A. 8 or 9. I mean, she's half Persian, gorgeous, fake boobs. I mean, incredible body, but... It doesn't doesn't make things right. How much did this cost you? It didn't cost me anything, but it's kind of a funny story. Money did come up about halfway through our relationship by her saying, you need to take me out more. You need to take me out more. And I was like, I just bought a house. I have a mortgage. I can't afford that. So, you know, this was a shock to me. So I, I call up her best friend and say, hey, you know, my girls, I don't know. This is a new thing for me. I don't know what's going on. And I made the mistake of I just read that um, Craigslist article about uh, declining assets and appreciating assets. You know oh, yes. And that's exactly what women are, depreciating assets. The Tom Likas Show.